I was wrong. Summoner Necromancer is absolutely insane. This is me with level 76, clearing a tier 61 nightmare dungeon. As a pure summoner, no, not as a shadow summoner mix. No, army of the dead, golem, minions, maximum attack speed, and in this case, also the cult leader Paragon node, which now hires the damage of our minions in comparison to how much attack speed they have, multiplicative with all the other things leading to your minions being able to blast everything into pieces. The funniest part about this build, you're actually going to be using Blight to pull everything together and then have your golem smash them. Blight pull them together, have your golem smash them, while your skeletons are just pummeling them. On top, we made a little change to the Book of the Dead that no one has done before, and I'll introduce you around the middle of the video. First, the gameplay loop, then 1 to 60, because the 1 to 60 is different to the 60 to 100. Pull over the full Paragon board, Sandishal skills everything. Gameplay loop is quite simple. We curse, we pull together with blind, and then we slam with the golem. Corpse explosions, instant cooldown reduction on the golem, stun again. Off to the next pack. Curse, blind, pull together. Curse, blind, pull together. Golem, land of the den. Corpse explosion to get resource back, then blind. In between, trigger your skeletons for the 30% damage multiplier, and then essentially have them just permanently locked down with the golem which is really nice because you can use the golem to target damage on the damage reduction guys. You can target the golem to get the one elite you want to have down destroyed and then just pick him off with your blights as well. Don't forget to press race skeleton in between for the healing, but actually more for the 30% multiplicative damage. Most important it is when you activate army of the dead, to also press race skeletons because army of the dead will provide a huge attack speed boost to your minions and then together with the 30% multiplier, it's hitting hard. First, 1 to 60. That is a wee bit different. We're starting with Reap into Enhanced Reap and also Acolyte's Reap, just giving us the chance to form some corpses and be a bit more aggressive. And we're also going to be using Sever. Yes, in this case, we're going to go for Sever into Enhanced Sever and also Dissever deals 2% more damage for each minion you have up and cast. This will allow you to speed level. I took 6 hours to level 60. Now we're going to obviously be having the corpse explosion go on and it's going to be the enhanced corpse explosion into also the blighted corpse explosion, which brings us to Grim Harvest into Fueled by Death for the bonus damage. Now we're not going to be using Iron Maiden. That one is just not good enough in any capacity. And also while leveling to Crapify, it doesn't really do it. So we first just boost the strength of our skeletal warriors. And yes, you might have seen Blood Mist is not being used in this build at all, even in High Nightmare Dungeons, and you don't miss it. Also boost the strength of your skeletal mages. That just keeps them up and running. And then because we're using Shadow Skills, you can also put the point into Reaper's Pursued to increase your movement speed. Now the next points are just going to go into Sever, so you have something to nuke stuff in the very beginning. But it also is going to bring us now towards Army of the Dead. So we're putting one single point into Gloom. We're putting another point here into Fuel by Death to just always have the damage multiplier even and higher. And then we have the beautiful skill, Army of the Den. Summoning our volatile explosive skeletons. And then we're going to have them also leave behind corpses and resummon our whole board of minions if we need to. Next two points are going into Grim Harvest. And then we're also going to pick up Decrepify into Enhanced Decrepify and Abhorrent Decrepify. Because at this stage of the game, when you're actually having Army of the Dead, you can also start reducing the cooldown of it. And while leveling, your skill bar would look following. You get Sever in, you have Decrepify, Army of the Dead, with the Golem and the Skeletons, and then now also the Corpse Explosion. Yes, you're going to very early get rid of the Reap. It seems like, pff, I mean, you should keep the Reap. No, 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 you don't need it. Because there are so many opponents for the Corpse Explosion to then provide Essence for the Sever to also have your Cold Mages to keep your Essence topped up. Which means dump that point into Acolyte's Reap because we don't need it anymore. The Enhanced Reap has to stay. We can put that into Fueled by Death. To now always have enough corpses, also go for the Hood Flash. We really want the Hood Flash there. And lastly, we're going to pick Kalan's Addict. Now, realistically... Shadow Blight would still be better, but we're playing the pure summoner and it's such a joy to then make maximum use of Kellen's Addict as well. And since Kellen's Addict gives us bonus attack speed, well, we do want more attack speed. 
first make your golem stronger and then you're also going to have the inspiring leader popping together with hellbent commander and death defense that looks plenty well and this is going to carry us through all the world tiers up to world tier four since we're using Shadow Shebang, it doesn't hurt to also put the points in Gloom because it increases my Shadow Damage Multiplicative stacking, and that is for the Corpse Explosion and also for the Sever, but later for the Blight as well. You want also the Crippling Darkness for your Shadow Skills to actually stun because that stun allows you to overcome the Capstone Dungeon bosses extremely easy because you have the Cold Mages doing Stagger and the Stun doing Stagger to just stagger them instantly. Plus Terror 3 points to then, again, Chilled, frozen slowed enemies take more damage we can also enhance our damage into cursed opponents which does work equivalently fancy the little final point goes into thorns because you and your minions are getting thorns and when your minions with thorns are getting hit they can actually trigger a lucky hit a bit weird but it is what it is now that was all the skill points and with level 55 now you will just breathe a through lies exactly with this build and yes it is that simple like i cannot stress this enough how very strong this build is while leveling but you're gonna hit world tier 4 and that's where sever slowly starts falling off and we'll need to replace it for something better and that is going to be points out in sever all four points out as well blight together with enhanced blight for the slow and supernatural blight for the damage multiplier and take the final point out and also all the points in blight and now we're boosting corpse explosion to the max because corpse explosion next to our whole minion damage is our main damage that we're going to use to boost our damage and our golem's damage further because the golem's damage the golem slam still gets higher with my multipliers so if i deal nine percent more damage and if i deal 12 percent more damage that's also going to boost my golem's slam the fun part about the blight is that we're going to be using something called aspect of the void for blights defiled area when spawned pulls in enemies around the affected area that allows you to pull in without corpse tendrils and have the golem just slam them and slam them and slam them because you're gonna curse it and then while you're blighting in there cursed cooldown reduction slam first cooldown reduction slam permanently stuck the coolest part about our gear one of the main aspects is in the codex of powers and that is the unyielding commander while army of the dead is active your minions gain 70 percent attack speed and take 90 percent reduced damage that one you have from the Codex of Power extremely early on and can continuously carry around on your weapon. Now, a two-handed weapon would technically be better, but I don't have the aspect slots to 100% run a two-handed weapon and you need the lucky hit chance because we are playing an interesting variation of this build that is also running the Ring of Mendeln. Yes, the ring is bad if you're not scaling your damage, because the explosion from Mendon is only getting scaled by my critical strike damage and also by my damage multipliers. Regardless, even if this is only getting scaled by me, with the scaling that we do, it is still worth it. First, it gives us minion life and minion attack speed. Minion attack speed translates into more damage multiplier in our minions. But most importantly, every, every lucky hit I do and... Army of the Dead has a 100% lucky hit chance, more or less. I mean, if I put on the ring now, there's the 100% lucky hit chance. That 100% lucky hit chance allows us to continuously trigger Mendeln while that is active. to have like a constant amount of crazy explosions happening because it turns your minion hits into, well, explosions that then together with the pull together of the Blight and also with your Golem Slams just works perfectly to obliterate your competition left, right and center. On the second ring, we have the reanimation aspect for permanent damage increase of 40% multiplicative. So we're increasing with Cult Leader later, multiplicative in the Paragon board. I'll get to that. That multiplicative, Hellband Commander multiplicative, it's quite crazy. What you definitely want on your ring is maximum minion life, lucky hit chance, maximum life yourself, and then preferable critical strike chance because your minions are getting portions of your critical strike chance. And well, you do want them to just do more damage. The amulet is running Frenzy Den. That gives us more attack speed up to 63% and every 20% attack speed translate into 10% more multiplicative damage. That seems pretty good to me. Important here would be the Hellbent Commander passive, probably total armor. And you really do want, well, even more minion attack speed on the amulet. Damage reduction doesn't hurt because you need to stay alive yourself since you don't actually have Blood Mist. Now the real trick to stay alive is Juggernaut. Yep. I get four and a half thousand armor plus 
With a total armor percentage roll on my helmet, I'm at 13.5k armor with level 78. Yep, that's it. Level 78. Easier than ever. Now here we want maximum minion life, maximum life, then damage reduction, and probably corpse explosion. This will be close to impossible to find on a pants, but if you get that super S tier roll for a billion gold. On the chest, we're having the blighted aspect, as I said, and here's also maximum minion life, maximum life, and then damage reduction and damage reduction. Could think about rolling ultimate skill damage because that is your army of the dead and army of the dead chunks quite hard. Helmet is going to increase the amount of scale to warriors you have. And here you do want cooldown reduction for certain with a total armor percentage roll. And then it's kind of completely open. Maximum life wouldn't hurt. And just a flat intelligence roll or ranks to decrepify for a little bit more slow and damage reduction are options. Now the gloves have a must and that is lucky hit chance. You don't have lucky hit chance on there, put them in the trash bin. The four ranks and blight are optional, but more blight damage does also not hurt. Critical strike chance is on the table and simply intelligence. Now the aspect on the gloves is absolutely interchangeable and here you have two choices. We can either yoink of the ring, so the 40% damage and put that on the gloves so we can do whatever we want on the ring. For example, use Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. Or if you're too lazy to cast Corpse Explosion the whole time, you could also go for Ring of Sacrilegious Souls, which is a little bit of a waste because we're not actually using Corpse Tendrils in this build right now. Therefore, I don't actually use it. Alternative would be putting your Skeletal Warriors on your gloves. And then you're able to move your Offen Aspect, which is right now the damage reduction to your minions over to your helmet. And lastly, you could actually wear a two-handed weapon, which is incredible, but we would be losing the lucky hit chance here on the wand, which also affects our ring to have less lucky hit chance. And I mean, it's a little bit choose your poison here, min-maxing around with those things. My recommendation is mostly keeping this, and if you get Ixfeld's Corroded Signet, give it a twirl, but it might not be max damaging because you're not fully critting out, it will still be very good mixed damage together with the lucky hit of Mendel as we're lucky hit maxing out. And your one hand weapon, we talked about it, needs to be a wand because we want want a one wand <laughs> since since one gives us the lucky hit chance. And here again, we could be looking for ultimate skill damage, which I don't have at all for the army of the dead, critical strike damage to boost our Mendel and also intelligence, damage versus vulnerable, good choices. Now, as the offend, I currently have a shield, and that shield has the 20% damage reduction for our minions running. I do believe we can cut this in the long run, but the shield also provides lucky hit chance. I would rather replace the shield through a focus, which would give me another offensive aspect, therefore allowing me to rotate the reanimation if I use Ixfeld over to my focus, to then have the bonus skeletons on my gloves and my helmet to then actually take the damage reduction. The planner in the description below does have the final version that I think is the best. Which minions do we use? Here it gets super interesting. We're having the Iron Golem for the slam and to make things vulnerable because he is our source of vulnerable. And that slam from the Golem scales with my multipliers. It's a bit weird, but I mean, it is what it is. The Skeletal Mages are providing cold with Essence Production, so I can spam my Blight even more to consistently pull things together. And Blight has two interesting Lucky Hit components on Hit, which can crit, and also the damage over time that can Lucky Hit. And then lastly, we're not playing Reapers because we don't need the bonus corpses. We're producing enough bonus corpses all the time, but we're using the Skirmishers. Each time you Critical Strike, and that would be my Blind, Golem Slam, my Army of the Dead, all of them can Critical Strike. Your Skirmishers Warriors next attack critical strikes and deals 50% multiplicative bonus critical strike damage. That can only happen every three seconds, but we have a bunch of Skeletal Warriors that can go crazy. And interestingly enough, if you do have the Ring of Mendel, that might scale with your damage, but that gives your minions a very ba banger boomer attack. And then your minion will definitely Critical Strike. And that Critical Strike is also 50% higher. This has led to some interesting damages happening in between where suddenly mobs just vanish. And no, I don't feel the lack of corpses at all. 
not even versus bosses, because as soon as I activate Army of the Den, I get so many corpses that I can then turn into more corpses as crazy. Now I'm not level 100 and don't have all the Paragon points, Let's go into the planner. Now the Paragon board is plenty tricky and needs to provide a lot of resistance to all elements because that's what you're struggling with since you can't sacrifice your minions for resistance. First glyph is going to be Mage Glyph to give your minions 35% increased resistance to all elements and that makes sure that they don't just die to the elemental hazards. Also your skeletal mage damage will be improved that's quite nice. Then we're going straight up into the Coal Leader board and here you do want the Paragon nodes within range gain bonus to their minion damage and damage reduction modifiers. So you get the Debt Razor Glyph in, boosting your minions to be more damagey and also to just have a better damage reduction happening. Overall, boost your minion damage and attack speed. Make your minion resistance to all elements higher again and, well, take a little bit of damage. Technically, this one node is free. You don't have to take it. And then move into Cool Leader, which now gives you the bonus attack damage multiplicative and everyone, also your Golem, for every plus 20 attack speed bonus they have. Lastly, we do want the minion armor higher and the minion maximum life because these nodes actually work multiplicative on what you have. Yes, down here, we're not just hiring our skeletal warrior armor and damage. It is not worth it. But we're then going over to the flesh eater board and this 40% multiplier hires the damage of our golem slam, but also in general just makes us more efficient and also hires the damage of Ixfeld and men down pretty good now this board needs to be taken second in the beginning but it will be later swapped out in position with the golem board why take this in the beginning because we have the poison resistance nodes here and we also do have the resistance to our elements and right now it has me almost at resistance cap with three rings on lightning frost and fire without a big hassle if I wouldn't take this second and also slot here the Amplify Glyph for more damage multiplier on me and my minions, but if I wouldn't slot this, I couldn't resistance myself out to survive in higher Nightmare Dungeons, and that would be feeling just terrible. Also, do take the Critical Strike here because more Critical Strike is more damage for your minions too. Then we're going into the Golem board, and again, this Golem board can essentially be the second board afterwards, because it has high stat requirements that you do want to meet. You want every rare node to work. And that's why you're swapping these two boards around level 85, I would say, when you have enough Paragon boards, when you have enough Paragon points for this to make sense. And here we want the Golem damage, the Golem maximum life, the Golem armor, the intelligence, the Golem damage, and that's all like double, double damage, right? Plus then later, more damage while Golem is active for me and more armor while Golem is active, which helps me to max out even easier without these total armor rolls. Here we're slotting the Golem Glyph to just increase our Golem damage further. And lastly, we're going to the Send of Death board for the damage reduction on me or bonus damage multiplier. Bonus damage multiplier if we use up all the corpses is again boosting Mandeln, the Golem and Axefelds. Here also we're taking the Essence Glyph to boost our damage critical multiplier for Mandel and Axefeld. Yes, we're hybridizing a bit, but it works plenty well. More armor than dexterity as well. And lastly, also the critical strike damage, which does not hurt. Ultimately, we're boosting this with Flesh of Adrenaline. That gives me a damage multiplier. That damage multiplier is Mendel, Axefeld, and Golem again. That goes with duration support to always be up. Safeguard support, so I have damage reduction going on and die don't die so easy. And tactical support. So it's always up. That gets followed up by Tempest with the breaking support because our only source of vulnerable is the golem right now. And if he's not vulnerable, then we want the Tempest to actually do the vulnerable. That is also with Arcing to hit more opponents. And right now I'm using resource support, but realistically I am creating enough resource already through corpse explosions and also my cold mages. So that resource support could be whatever else you want. And here we could be working with a bonus chill that actually staggers bosses. Or alternatively, you can actually have the poison support. And that helps really nice with what your minions do because they're attacking one and then he dies and then the poison spreads around and then there's more poison everywhere. And yeah, it's quite fantastic to be honest to have all the poison go around. And I haven't tested this yet, but technically this is poison damage over time and it should trigger your Ixfeld's corroded signet 
but I don't have Ace Felds to test this yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I severely underestimated minions and will push this to 100 to also clear 100s, but it is stronger than it has ever been before. And especially this hybrid fun build leads to mental damages. Give it a go. It has been the best level experience. Here's the stream where we actually leveled it from 1 to 60 in 6 hours. Additionally to that, our level guide for this season.